Hey, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eurodition Network uh, live interactive Black History and Knowledge session tonight, tonight, tonight. I don't want to belabor this too much. We're going to uh, talk about gun violence and guns in America and where we are. And we're going to do this. We're on a little bit early. So uh, if you hopefully everybody got my notification for that, uh, we're on a little bit early. I want to try to do this as long as I can and give it out over our guests. Uh, are in and out. Um, I invited some, a lot of people and I appreciate because folks actually responded to me um, and some at the last minute and I really greatly appreciate it uh, and came on uh, to discuss this important topic with everything that we have going on in the country. Um, I think it's something that we need to talk to. So we will have um, a group of people on. Some are still you know, waiting to see if they connect with us, but I got two of my buddies on here. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I told them I wasn't going to belabor this. I was just going to get on here, right? Um, one is my Navy buddy. Uh, we served together in, in the Navy. Um, good friend, teacher, uh, really like his honesty on things. Uh, my, my, my friend, Tracy, how you doing? Hi, how are you doing, Eddie? Good, good, good. Uh, my other buddy, buddy, you, we have never met physically, but I've been on his show. He has been on my show. We've talked to each other <laughs> many, many times. And I asked him at the last minute because we had someone who couldn't make it. Uh, and he, he said, hey, man, gladly. And I appreciate you for that. My brother, Mike Wiley, how you doing? Man, I'm doing fantastic, sir. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, I just want to say again, you guys, thank you. Um, this is a difficult subject, right? Um, because I think it affects all of us. It's 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 uh, it has roots in many different things, but it is definitely affecting all of us. And as uh, people with kids, um, who you know are you know even our older kids, they leave out every day. It has to weigh um, on all of us, right? Uh, the situation. Uh, that's going up. Well, I see my boy Tony Briscoe has joined. I, Tony, give me a two finger up if you're ready to come from backstage. You good? All right. <laughs> All right, Tony, what's going on, man? You know, I don't listen. You said give a two finger up and I gave a thumb. See, that's the problem. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so there's another one of my, my good friends from a Navy guy, too. So I got on two Navy guys. That's why, I, look, my hat look a little grungy, guys. I'm retired. Um, but but it's all good. I knew Mike would be wearing a hat. So I, I wanted to be, you know, get into some synergy with him. So <laughs> awesome. How you doing, Tracy? Mike. Man, I'm doing you good. Know, all right. It's good. Hey, so you know, there there are many different things about this whole gun thing. Um and and as I was saying before you came on, uh Tony, you know, one of the issues that we have is we having kids. Right. And I'm only going to speak from it as 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 a father. It, it really bothers me uh, because I worry about my sons. Right. At all levels. I have adult sons, but I worry about them because you just never know nowadays. It's it's it's, it's just everywhere. And I want to I guess my first question uh, to all of you all is how do you have the discussion with your children as we're going through 
this period of increased violence um, and devaluation of, 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 of life? Anybody? Any one of y'all? Yeah, I, I don't know what y'all's etiquette, how y'all normally rotate through, so I want to make sure I'm not stepping on anybody's toes, but I will tell you as a father with three daughters myself, uh, ranging in from different ages in college and in, in high school, it's not a conversation that they're not already having. So um, if you haven't already been having it with them for years, which we've had plenty of opportunities to do so, then, then I think uh, they're, they're getting their information from a lot of different sources. That's true. Yeah, I, I would agree. You know, I, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Go yeah, ahead. I, I, would, I would agree. You know, the, the conversation... Um, it's, I don't want to say it's one that I, I don't really need to have. Um, I've had it. Um, I had a blow up last week trying to explain, you know, why do you always think the worst things? And it's like, I don't think the worst things. I just know humankind right now. And typically when young people gather in certain places in a group, something is going to jump off. That's just that's just what it is. The young man who lost his life, Shondell Holiday at the Bean in Chicago, which caused mm -hmm. the air to lock that place down at night. That was one of the mentees in our Champs Mail mentoring program. Oh, that was wow. one of our boys. One of our boys who said that he, he, he one of his goals was living past 18. Mm. He never made it. Never made it. Wow. You know, go ahead, Mike. I know you had something to say on it. Well, no, you know, I, I was just going to say, you know, when... I, <laughs> When I became a father, my um, <laughs> my anxiety was like, oh, my God, I'm going to eventually have to have the sex talk with these guys. That was, that was, you right. know what I mean? That was my thing. Yeah. It was just like, I, you know, when it gets to a certain age, it's like, I'm going to have to have that talk with them. Like, that was my, that was my worry at the time. And, but then after the Trayvon Martin incident mm -hmm. it was the the talk that i had to have with them was different you know and it was uh oh and that talk was i had to um i had to now prepare them for when they go into a store you know mm -hmm. i had to add that talk you know listen when you go into a store don't keep your hands in your pockets um make sure you acknowledge the security person so they know you see that they see you. Um, don't mm. linger in one space. Don't linger in one spot for too long. And you know that was the talk I had to have. And now it's, dude, keep your head on the swivel. You know what I mean? Because you just never know where something's gonna pop off. And you know, especially now, you know, they in their phones and they're doing other things. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, man, be aware of your surroundings. Like I, you know, the talk that I had with them, Eddie. I tell them when they go into a place. Find out where the exits are. Yeah. Look, look for the nearest exits. Like, like that. Yeah. Those are the conversations that I have now. Not, hey, man, when you meet a girl, you know, this is no. It's listen. When you go into the spot, man, look for the exits. You know what I'm saying? Be be aware of your surroundings, and and that's that's the conversations now, man. And that's with my my sons and and my nephews, their friends, all of that stuff. And it's just. That, yeah, that's a real thing. Time, that's the time that we're living in. It's a real thing. You know, I tell uh, me and Tina, we were joking with the boys recently, and we were like, um, if you start hearing uh, arguments or somebody goes, whoop, whoop, or if you hear somebody go, yeehaw, or whatever, uh, look and be ready to run, right? And I said, you know, it's not that it's, cow it's not cowardice. Right. It's just uh, awareness, you know. Yep. Be, having been, and I'm sure Tracy and, and Tony can speak to this too, having been all over the world going overseas with the Navy, you become very much aware of being vigilant, vigilant and knowing, um, hey man, things could jump off at any moment, right? Mm -hmm. And having to teach our kids this, though I feel it is sad, I think it is something, like Tracy said earlier, that uh, we need to have that conversation across the board uh, with all of our children. Um, and we need to be honest about it. And hopefully that honesty will be able to get them home, you know, um, safe to us. So now, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, let me get on that real quick, too, because, you know, I get it. Being a high school teacher, I, I get about 140 extra kids every year, right? Yeah. And we actually drill for this in school. And oh, wow. many of them have gotten almost to where they're complacent with it. They, they already know what we're going to do in the drill. And they bring it up regularly that, you know, anyone that they find would be a potential threat has also been through these drills. So it's yeah, not yeah. even that they're having the conversations amongst themselves and they see a lot of it. And, and what I feel from it is that a little bit of helplessness because they, they don't know who that's going to be. And, and I doubt any victim ever woke up realizing they were going to be a victim that day. Yeah. But, you know, what are they going to do when the other people are learning exactly what they're going to do? You know, that, that's a great point. You know, um, most times with threats, it's the insider threat, right? Yeah. The, the person that knows what your responses are going to be. Um, it's almost like those old days, you know, uh, we were in school uh, because I grew up in, in, in the Midwest where, you know, you did the tornado drills and you did the uh, and I'm actually young enough to remember some of the nuclear threat drills that probably they, they realized this is stupid, but uh, we, you know, <laughs> hiding and putting your hand, you know, between all of this stuff. But people do know where your tactical, you know, what your responses are going to be, what rooms you're going to hide in and all of this. And so um, it is something that, yeah, I think I can see the complacency. I can see, I can definitely see how you could get used to it yeah. and be like, oh man, we're going to do another drill. You know how we used to, we got to go do another drill. It's another drill, man. Right. Yeah. And fall out of it. So it, I can, can see that. Easy. It can be easy. We had a situation in Chicago last week. Teacher, uh, parent gets call uh, from daughter that, hey, I'm being bullied. Hmm. Right. Goes to the office. Parent comes in, has a conversation. Parent leaves. Daughter texts her again. I'm back in the same room being bullied. Parent comes back up into the school. Watch security engage with somebody else. Allegedly mm. goes into this classroom. Now she allegedly, and I'm using alleged because I don't want no, I don't want no smoke for anybody no on this. Smoke. I got you. Allegedly used pepper spray, right? Mm -hmm. To defend a child who's allegedly being bullied. But what if that parent would have came in with a firearm? Mm. They got into the hallway. Yeah, in, in, into mm. the classroom. Is is dangerous, my brothers. It's dangerous. <laughs> Tito wanted me to say hi, Tracy. Uh, tell your wife I said hello too. Um, Tony and Mike, good to see you again. I think my son chimed in here, said something for real. Mike, look for your main exes and how to use your environments to defend yourself. My children are violent, so I'm not really oh, worried. I'm, I'm, look, I'm with them. I, I, I don't see honestly nothing wrong with what he said. Yeah, <laughs> man, they'll, like, they'll tell you. Fun. Eddie, I'm like Jason Bourne when I go into a place. It's like, I'm looking for exits. <laughs> I'm, I'm reaching for the nearest phone book. It's like, whatever it takes, man, for me to get up out of here. That's what I got to do. Yeah. I, I sit a certain way in restaurants. Um, yeah, absolutely. I sit a certain way. And so when I'm with, when I'm, when I'm out with men, you know, there's a wrestle on like, bro, I can't sit with my back to the door. Like, to the door. Yeah. So one, all right, something go down. You got to handle that business. But it's like, <laughs> We are, and it's not like we don't want to walk or live in fear, but we right. have to live in awareness. All right. We have I to mean, live in awareness, and I think that's the challenge every day. Like, you know, it's, it was very nice in Chicago today. Like, we hit 80 degrees. That's and scary. I'm rolling, but I only have one window down, and that bad fella is halfway up. All the other... You used to roll down to Chicago. You want everybody? No, I don't want you to hear my music. I don't want you to hear No, I got one window down. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, it's nobody funny. wants to be seen anymore. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. Yeah, I it, mean, but do you look? Do you blame it? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, just, that's just it. You know, back in the day, you used to drive and you used to have your arm hanging out the window, old school style. <laughs> now it's like, man, I ain't putting my hand out this window. It's like I'm, I got to crack just enough for me to get a little fresh air if I don't want to turn my air conditioner on. But other than that. I, I can't roll with the windows down like that anymore. It's just, you just, it's, it's sad that you just don't, 
that you don't trust people like that anymore, especially people within your, you know, within your own community. It's just like, you just, you just, it's, it's a, every day is just a precautionary tale. It's like, you know, the Bible tells us that we have to watch as well as pray. Right. Mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm praying every day I go out, but at the same time, I'm, I'm aware of my surroundings. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm watching, I'm observing because that's how you have to be do. It's, it's an adventure to go to the gas station nowadays. So I'm pumping gas this morning, Mike. Oh no. Now one, the credit card thing wasn't working. So now I got to walk from my car inside. Oh, I'm sorry. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> and I come so I lock my car as soon as I get out, even when I'm I stand outside and pump gas and mm -hmm. I lock my car door and then I pump my gas. Like that's how extreme we yeah. have to go now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the me Hey, look, I'm not fighting over no car. You you run up on me as much as my ego, a ego. Shut up, get out the car, and let them drive off. That mm -hmm. little Santa Fe Hyundai ain't worth it, bro. They probably can steal it from you anyway based on the jacked up work that Hyundai is allegedly. I'm going to use the word alleged again because I don't want no smoke. <laughs> Why are they coming after you? Right. You know, but it's like those are the things. And so when somebody gets, I, I admire people who are concealed carry and who fight back and who live to tell a story about fighting back. Yeah. I, I admire their bravery even to just pull out that to, to, like somebody's got a gun on you already and you're going to reach and grab yours, pull it out real fast. Right. And this is the thing that people are not getting that more and more people are defending themselves. Absolutely. So a 13 year old got killed by a lady because he was breaking into her car with a group of his friends. And he pulled out a gun as she walked up to him. Well, I don't know how she was able to get in her purse, <laughs> pull out her piece and fire. But at that, she doesn't see a 13 year old boy. I see yeah. somebody pointing a firearm at me. Your age goes out the window. Your age goes out the window. But you're, now you're making more citizens carry guns, which in a way puts more citizens in jeopardy. Because we got a lot of citizens who never get accounted for, and those are the ones who die from bullets that travel a mile away mm -hmm. or a block away, who were sporadically hit. Um, in Mexico, when the when the Americans who were there, when they got um when they got attacked, when two of them got killed, there was a lady a mile away who got killed from a stray bullet from that shooting. Yep. Wow. That uh, that happened right here in East Texas. Recently, a baseball player on the field dropped all of a sudden, and nobody, and it took him a while to figure out he had gotten hit from a stray bullet Are you from somebody uh, shooting, yeah, from a, from a mile away, just right here in, in Texas. Of course, Texas now, you got to realize, into the old Wild West out here, I think, you know, yeah. we have a shooting every other week. And, you know. Yeah, I, 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 I often pray. I pray a lot for you, for y'all, you know, my friends and, you know, like you all, uh, Tracy people in Texas, because, you know, it's not, you know, that, that, that brings us to another question I got for you all. Well, wait, wait, before I do this, I saw my brother-in-law said, I stand outside the car with my gun in my hand to pump gas, uh, but true. And, and, and look, I, and I see, uh, John Brown said I had a shootout. I had a shootout when they tried to carjack me for my Audi. Oh, wow. Wow. Look, Wow. Look, I, it brings me to the other part of this. So, you know, the biggest argument that is always thrown out here for this extra uh, promulgation of guns is always the Second Amendment. Right. It's always the Second Amendment. Um, I am the good guy with the gun mentality. Yeah, we're going to get into that, too. Right. But yeah. but but that first one that they always throw out. Right. And, and it's funny to me because they the 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 Second Amendment says a well regulated militia being necessary, right? Uh, uh, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now we often forget that militia part, the protection of your state. But I, this is this is this is Eddie's opinion. Historically, I also think that we forget the time in which that amendment was written. 
and why it was important to keep a well-regulated militia, right? And so I wanted to get you guys thoughts on that second amendment first. Uh, how do you feel about, and, and I, I, I make no judgment, right? Um, how you feel about the way it is used. Well, let me jump in. I'm, I'm going to say this real quick. Um, on my song, I got a song on my first album called Trump Card. Mm -hmm. And on that song, I say, and us Christians love our guns. And so we tell people to keep calm. And that's just the fact. When it comes to this amendment, we only pay attention to the part that a right to bear arms and we exclude the rest. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think we know who, what that militia was going to be designed for in mm -hmm. case of an uprising or a slave revolt in some mm -hmm. regard, right? So let's just call that what it is. But I, I wanted to say that we love our guns. You know, I, I always imagine what would happen if the founding fathers came were, were able to come into the present day, I, 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 I guarantee you they would be like, you guys are still following this thing? We wrote that like how many years ago? It was like things changed. And I'm almost certain that when they made the Second Amendment, they weren't considering AR-15s in that argument. I mean, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's just, I, I don't understand why. And, I, and I, I, I appreciate the Constitution and I love the Constitution. But I think a lot of people take the Constitution out of context when it comes to a lot of things. It's just like anything, people will use something for and, and they will use the context that they want for their benefit. And it's just yeah. like, as I was saying, it's like they omit that part every time when it comes to the right to bear arms. Listen, I, I believe in the right for a person to defend him or herself. But it has to get to a point where we have to look at this thing for what it is. It's easier for a person to get a gun than it is for them to get a, a loan for a home. That's a problem. It's easier for a person to get a gun than it is for them to get a, almost a, a student loan. I mean, it's I. you can get a gun almost effortlessly it's like what what's the standard like they, they it's like even if you just reevaluated the 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 you know the the qualifications or the criteria in order for you to purchase a gun it's like they don't even want to look at that aspect of it there is some level of control that you can enforce without taking away but it's just like the, nothing is being done absolutely yeah. nothing and it's just Thoughts and prayers only go so far. I mean, it's a lot of thoughts and prayers that's been going out for, for years, and it ain't did nobody no good because you got a lot of families that got a lot of empty seats when the holidays come around. And those thoughts yeah. and prayers ain't filling those seats. Those thoughts and prayers didn't prevent what happened from happening. So at what point do we look at it for what it is and say, okay, listen, we're not trying to take away your weapons, but how can we regulate? How can we make this so regulate. it's not so easy for the wrong people to get these weapons in their hands? Yeah, you know, I think you hit on so many topics that even on a constitutional level can be addressed. I'm one of the ones that believes, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the Constitution as mm -hmm. the reason why it has survived so long uh, like you said, the founders would look at it and we're still following. Well, it's because they made what could be reinterpreted as a living and breathing document. And every few generations, we have to reinterpret it, right? right. But it is all in the historical context. No, when they wrote the, the Second Amendment, it, it's very clear if you look at the actual verbiage of congressional powers towards a militia, mm -hmm. and if you look at the actual grammar structure, that they were referring specifically to a militia, right? Mm -hmm. There was no question about whether people would be able to own a weapon. I mean, hunters, people, that's what they use to feed themselves in many cases. So the idea of owning a weapon wasn't a question. But again, you said bringing in, you know, the advancements in weaponry. 
So at some point, we do have to breathe a little bit of interpretation into this document that it was not intended to be unlimited, all-powerful weapons to everybody. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, back in the 70s, the NRA started this whole defense against a tyrannical government interpretation, uh -huh. which there's no, in, no evidence anywhere ever that that was a thing. It, it, I mean, going back and looking at the, uh, the letters and the Federalist Papers or any of the interpretations that you see uh, from the 1700s, right? Mm -hmm. So when they started reinterpreting it, it was because really they were trying to promote one particular um, one particular business, let's just say. This is what it is. It was about money, trying to get sales, right? But you can look throughout history. This was never an issue. I mean, remember who the good guys were at Tombstone. It was Wyatt Earp, right? And it was because they were trying to outlaw guns from coming into town. Coming into they town. Were the good guys. And there was never a question, right? right. So breathe, it, breathe some life into the Constitution. I agree with you 100% about we need to we need to do something. We need to relook at this issue. You know, but here's the thing, though. Here's here's the thing. Here's the, here's here, from when I see gun rights, right? Um, constitutionally, historically, um, I always look at um, United States versus Khrushchev, and I don't know if you guys are aware of that or you remember that. But this happened with the Colfax massacre in Louisiana where you know post uh, Civil War um, freemen were voting and you know believe it or not there were a lot of blacks and whites in this country who were okay with the idea of the country moving outside of slavery and growing to be inclusive but there's always that fringe, right? And if the fringe is in power, so I, I agree with Tracy is saying, but if the fringe is in power, so what wound up happening is even though we had Ulysses S. Grant who arguably went down and uh, did martial law in the South and tried to stop the, the rise of the Klan, it didn't stop the violence. And so then when it got to the Supreme Court, because these men went and killed hundreds of black people who were simply trying to be citizens and told them to put their guns down and they killed 60 to 70 more once they put their guns down. And the Supreme Court, right, then said, right, this is like 1873, then said that, you know what? That's not something that the federal government should be involved in. We should not be involved in making sure people are killed in a state. It's not our job. Not, they didn't inflict, they didn't do anything about their federal rights, right? Even though they're citizens. And so when the Supreme Court voted this, Khrushchev became a issue where in this country, um, blacks were told in many places you couldn't have guns. Minorities were told that wasn't just blacks. You can't, you can't have anything that will allow you to stop the, 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 the aggressor. Now, I find that funny because the people out here in this country will tell you, hey, they try to take my guns. I can't defend myself, right? But this is exactly what they tried to do and what they did do in many places to stop this communication like we're having tonight, Right? So my question, I guess, to you guys is this. <laughs> if, we, if we cannot look at our history, and I know this is something with you, Tracy, as a teacher. If we can't teach our history in honesty, right, so that we understand these things, we can learn these things, how do we expect our children, their peers, right, to hold those, you could call it moral values, or the decency of human life, right? How do we expect them to have that? Or any of these cases, the Dred Scott case, we teach those things because it makes somebody feel bad. Thoughts? 
But we're we're having that dilemma now. I, I I remember, I remember coming up in school and and Tracy. I don't, what what I don't know what what grade you teach, but I remember coming up in school and you know and and all the classrooms had their stuff posted up. And you know what was posted in every classroom I've ever gone to was the golden rule. You do unto others as you would have them, you know, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, right? Which just means you treat people how you want to be treated. I go into a classroom now, I don't see that. And no classroom I've ever been, and my wife is a teacher. I think she has it posted in her room. But if you go into a, a, a modern classroom right now, they don't have that posted anywhere. The yeah, not as, not as that specific role. You, you get a lot of the, uh, what they call the social emotional learning posters now, the be mm -hmm. thoughtful, be kind, and it's like really short versions, right? Okay. But, you know, hey, we can't be too social emotional learning because then we're indoctrinating kids, right? right. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful. We're the evil indoctrinators. I can't get a 10th grader to do his damn homework, but I'm indoctrinating kids. You know what I'm saying? Uh it's, it's hard. So how, I feel so how, you, Tracy. How, I feel you. Yeah. So how do you do that? So it's like how how do you when there's so it's like it, it, it's like when, just the way society is is so crazy because everything triggers everybody. It's like I yeah. I, I, sw I, I swear you're gonna uh, one day you're gonna go into a convention and you're gonna see people with stickers that say hi, my name is Craig. But don't mention toilet paper because it triggers me, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. well, I, I mean, it's just it's it's to the point where, you know, it's like you're like we're you're almost they're they're almost taking away the ability to 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 pass on any type of of, of knowledge or any type of especially when you think about history, and the way that history is, it's like you're not even allowed to teach it because like Trace like Tracy said, you're indoctrinating or you are uh, trying to make them feel shameful for who they are, which is, you know, like when you look at critical race theory, that's why they're trying to block that because well, we don't want you to, we don't want white kids to feel ashamed for this. And it's just like, how do you expect people to learn and do better if you can't talk about the mistakes that were made, pre that, that were made in the past? You have to be able to give them something to say, listen, this was messed up, and we don't want to go back to this. So mm -hmm. let's try right. to do this thing better. So if you can't talk about what happened, how are you going to prepare them and teach them to do better in the future? Good point. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great point. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I'm looking at Washington Post had an article out today that a federal judge in Virginia struck down an age limit of 21 to buy guns. Wow. This just goes back to what Mike said earlier. You can't get a loan for a business at 18 years old. Nope. But you can get a gun without a license in Indiana. You don't even need a permit anymore in Indiana to get a gun. You can just do whatever you want to do in Indiana now. And I think that's the... That's the piece. So how do we transform this life inside of our schools? I, I, I wish I had an answer. I, I, I don't. I think my heart was broken today. I walked into a school and the first thing the kid said was, hey, are, are you the new security guard? Wow. Because that's the impression that they have of, of black men, that when they are called in, it's called into discipline and to maintain structure. And it, it hit me. And I said, no, sir, I'm not. He goes, oh, you sound like a military man. You know, that's up a little bit, get a little bass in my voice, man. No, sir, I'm not, you know, but it was just like, that's their impression. So if that's their impression of me walking inside of a professional setting, what's their perfect, what's, what's their, what's their thought of other black men who they run into on the street? Mm -hmm. So if he's a security guard, you must be a op. So I'm going to shoot you if you look at me funny, because I don't want to take no chance of this. <laughs> and on the flip side, see, this is the essence of things that could unify us because there's not a pass for white people or white kids. Like when they talked about one of the students at the last school shooting who had to take blood off of her, off of her yeah. friend's body, yeah. put on her to, to fake dead. Like that's real stuff, right? We see the impact of guns on everybody. 
But the fact is, I don't recall it. Was it a congressman who got shot at the softball game? Yes, Scalise. Yeah. He still passed no laws for gun control, comprehensive gun control. Not a a congressman got shot, and we still passed no laws for gun control. Like, that's the stuff that's crazy to me. They said 18 gun violence is the leading cause of death for children and teens 18 through 20 years of old. Commit gun homicide. Yeah, I saw that. At triple rates of adults 21 and over. Like, let's. Let's talk. We just had three people under four people under 20 years old kill an off duty Chicago police officer. Yeah. Four. Yeah. And then said that that's my work. That's my work. They had tattooed on their neck. I don't know if you caught them. Two of them had tattooed on their neck. Blessed. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's the psychological, right? That's the psychological ramification of this. The, the problem is, you know, when we were little, all of us, right? I'm sure we all walked, we all ran around. You know, you got the uh, the little tree branch with the little things inside. You ran around going, pew, 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 you know, Absolutely. shooting at each other. We played Cowboys and Indians and Transformers or whatever, whatever was, you know, G.I. Joe. And so the idea of um, playing with guns is, is, has always been there in, in Old West. And in and, and, and the early 1900s, all throughout. So there was always some kind of idea of shooting. But when you look at what's going on right now, right, because we don't teach, and you guys have just said it, we don't educate, we don't give time, uh, some of us, uh, to allow the teachers to help the kids to have a better understanding. Because here's the thing. If a kid can't go home and get that understanding, mm. Right, that teacher like Tracy, like like your wife, Mike. Right, they have to be that person to say, "Hey, what's going on with you? Let's discuss it before we react. We react and do something that we can't take back. It's not like the same of shooting ping, 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 ping. Right. They actually now f- feel that I can actually go get the real thing. Forget the tree branch. Forget the hands. I'm gonna end this threat right here." Completely. So, Eddie, question. go ahead. So, now I, I'm I'm not a, I'm not. This is I'm I'm am an MC, so I would never blame hip hop for anything. I do want to discuss. Ask this though. What changed? Because I grew up, I could listen to Easy E, mm-hmm. I could listen to N.W.A., and I knew this can't be real life. Home bringing was don't bring this music in my house. So I had to sneak it in the house just to listen to it. But what happened where all of a sudden what we started seeing was these kids started taking what these artists were saying. We and we we could put it in we can we can put power out for this. Yeah. Raising kids for this. They actually started implementing what they were hearing and carrying it out. What happened to the generation that said, I know this is entertainment. I'm not trying to start facing Al Pacino. I'm not trying to be the Godfather. I'm not trying to be Harlem Knights or Rage in Harlem. And then all of a sudden, we actually saw this shift in society. Like, what changed it? Because I think, I don't know if we've dealt into the core of that, where movies, these kids started actually living it out. Well, that's a great question, and that's there's a, there's a, there's an answer to that. the The reality of it is, is that you know I did a series it was about two years ago, talking about the history of film, right? Mm. And when you look at the history of film and you and you track it, um, when we get into the idea of we we had the and, and I'm going to use this term because it's what it was called. We had the new Negro, right? Um, a uh, part in film. This is when Sidney Portier and uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and you can go on down. Uh, 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 Harry Belafonte just passed away. You had all of these men, and they were allowed to change from what what used to look like, you know, animalistic, not representing the actual humanity of of of, of people of color, uh, to actually being able to play you as a as a human being, right? Maybe not a full range of human being. But at, after World War II, that was allowed to happen because blacks had stopped going to the movies. And that was a lot of money. 
And so that was one of the reasons that pushed it, but it also a social thing. Things were changing in the way we look at People come back from World War One, World War II, and feeling like they are a part of this country, justifiably they were. And so we were fine. And then we got into, you know, the hero was no longer the cowboy. The hero was no longer the uh the 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 the, the the guy that was standing up for anything. The hero became, and Superfly became the drug dealer, the pimp, right? Um, that black exploitation that we were seeing did not just affect black people in film. It affected the entire world's look at how they saw the ghetto, mm. right? Mm. And when you consider those things, you have to understand, you know, Dr. King went through this whole thing where, you know, toward the end of his life, he, he felt that they were fighting a war on two fronts. He said, I'm fighting for us to be socially acceptable and be seen as, as human beings and people. And I'm fighting my own people in the ghetto to get out of a ghetto violent mentality, right? Where they are accepting violence, right? Because this is what the what what is easy to go to, my anger. I'm tired of being hurt. And so, you know, if you look at the first film that came out before that kind of kicked off the black exploitation era, it was uh, Sweet Sweetback's Bad Ass Song. That's the name of the movie. And, but in that movie, Sweetback was not necessarily a criminal. He's just a guy that said, hey, I'm not going to take any mess from, you know, authorities, right? You're not going to do nothing racial against me. If you look at Shaft that came on after that, Shaft had his own business. He was a detective, right? And then we went from that point to Superfly, to Coffee, to people not necessarily looking out for communities. Now, if a whole generation is raised that way, and then they raise their kids with the idea that the criminal, the hustler, the pimp is a hero, you know, we got to own that. Because we did not teach uh, people that beyond that, before that, that's not the case. This is exploitation. This is a bunch of people writing a story. And so by the time we came up, say in the late 80s, 90s, you started to see gangsters being hyped, money being thrown out. Everything was about bling, bling, pop, 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 pop. I could kill you, get your woman, whatever, whatever. It was no longer the kid and play, you know, dance. And it was no longer uh, Grandmaster Flash and all of them. It wasn't the white lines, you know, talking to you about cocaine. It wasn't the message. It was none of those things that we grew up. Because I tell people all the time, hip hop used to be fun. Y'all know, it used to be fun. It was about dancing, having a good time. I didn't care. And then it became about, let's go out and hurt somebody and let's they're shooting whatever and drugs and that message has permeated into two generations of kids who see that as the way to go when 50 cents said get rich or die trying mm. what am i saying right there get rich or die trying <laughs> right whatever i gotta do whatever i gotta do i'm gonna do yeah, and that's sure. a different message than by any means necessary that malcolm x said I have the right, because they always misquote Malcolm, to defend my family and myself. Right? He wasn't telling you just to go out there and kill nobody. He was like, this is my God-given right to be the man who I am. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I got another question, but I, I want Mike and Tracy to jump in real quick. No, you no, know, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It's you know, even even when I was coming up, and, and same thing, Tony, it was like that. My mom didn't allow me to listen to that music, man. I had my tape, and I would hold my radio up to my ear. And I'm like, I hope she can't hear it, and I would listen to it. And those 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 images, the portrayal of that lifestyle, became more glamorized as hip hop became bigger, right? When it was Grandmaster Flash and 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 guys like Kumo D and LL Cool J, you know they didn't really rap about that stuff. They rapped about girls. They rapped about I'm better than you at rapping, and and that was the extent of it. You know, don't you, you believe in our Run DMC now? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Easton Boys, you know we had the crew back then. I mean, we were we we were rapping about tennis shoes. Uh, look. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I, 
I'm, 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 I'm I don't want to mention his name, but I'm going to mention it because I don't want to bring up any ill feelings. But even, even Will Smith, when he started out, he had a song called "I Believe I Can Beat Mike Tyson." The song was hilarious. Right? Yes, and that, was, and that was the stuff that I listened to when I was coming up. When I, I listened to like all those East Coast guys, like Heavy D and and LL and Kumo and all of them, I listened to that stuff. It wasn't. It, it's like the landscape changed when gangster rap was introduced, mm -hmm. yeah. and it became then when it became mainstream. That's when the whole dynamic changed because now it's like, oh, in order for me to get the cars, in order for me to get the girls, in order for me to get the jewels and stuff like that, this is the lifestyle that that I have to live. And people start adopting that stuff. Before it was work hard to get what you want. You know, <clears throat> I, there was a line in Heavy D and one of Heavy D songs. He was like, you see this Jeep I drive? I got it honestly. You see the clothes I wear? I got it honestly. You I see got the it money honestly. I got, I got it honestly. I work hard. It ain't easy being me. That was a line in his song. Now it's like, you know, and then it, it switched from that. Mr. It's Jacob, switched. without the ladder, it don't matter. Clap it the don't matter. Up. You know, um, what's <laughs> what's my guy name? Um, you know, I got to get mine. You got to get yours. All of these, the messages started to change. And as rap became more mainstream, and as you started seeing it more and more on TV, like on MTV and all the video and all that stuff that they was doing, as it became more mainstream, it became more influential. And that's when the, sh that's when the shift happened. And th think about it. Movies been around forever. Ever. And I mean, in movies, it's like folks been killing fo Like Arnold Schwarzenegger shot up a whole police department and nobody said nothing. Rambo in that and in, in that one Rambo movie, he killed at least 150 killed, people, he right? Killed, he killed at least three villages worth of people. And I was like, <laughs> I said, everybody's okay with this. I guess like, yes, Rambo. That's a, you know, you expect that. Nobody says anything. So film has been around forever and it's I been the you. same. And it's, but it was yeah. something about that music. It was something mm. about how how now it seemed like our like our stories. We're being told, and everybody all of a sudden now, oh, I can relate to this. No, you can't. You're not street. You can't. Yeah. You you got two parents at home. You went to a private school. Stop it. Mm. But Put that was. The, but that was the thing, and it was just like once that once that that dynamic changed, and once the message started to change, and 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 once that 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 happened, it was all it was all down here from there, unfortunately. You know, I think everything you just described actually um, helps analyze one particular aspect of gun violence, right? It's the the stereotype the of the, the inner city, the gang sh the gang violence and stuff, right? And it's it's that false bravado and respect and gang mentality, right? Mm -hmm. But I think another aspect of it that you you barely touched on there for a second that I think people leave out a lot is there was also at the same time as the, the, the gangster rap and the gangster movies, you know, with Wesley Snipe and all, you also had those um, cops that will do anything oh, yeah. to be right, like Cobra, for instance, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. He, that was, for a long time, considered the, the, one of the most violent movies, right? It That's killed good. the most people. And you had Dirty Harry, mm -hmm. and you had The Shield, these cops that, I will do what it takes. Big Mackie, baby. Big Mac. Right? Let's go. Yeah. Let's and, go. Come on, Tracy. Right. <laughs> and, and I really feel that a lot of that mentality has fueled a lot of the whole home, I need to protect my house with 8 million guns philosophies, you know? And, mm -hmm. and it, it is one of those things where I can step up and be Dirty Harry if you invade my house improperly, right? And I think that on the side of the the whole pro gun advocates on one side of the aisle who also use those stereotypes of of the of the inner city gang violence and stuff mm -hmm. as the reason why they have to be dirty hairy you know what i mean so i think they go hand in hand but people don't look at the old let's justify using guns in a violent way even though you know that it's it's not really setting a good example. You know what I mean? It's not really within the lines. Yeah, you know I see John Brown's comments and, and John on on YouTube. I'm not disagreeing with you when he says regulations are obsolete. Criminals don't follow the law, and I think therein 
is part of the problem that keeps resurfacing because there are citizens who we're the ones who are going to go get the proper licensing right. and pay the money. We're the ones who are going to go and get the concealed carry training that we need and pay the money. I've avoided all of that stuff because I'm a military man. I know how I think. I know how I move. So I, I just don't. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, mm-hmm. I'm, praying, I'm praying every day I step out the house. Like, Father, keep me because I don't. So it's like, you, you got you to gotta know you. And, and I, I've never been in a combat zone at all. But after 9-11, being trained by Marines, oh, we know how to get it in. So, yeah. you know, but it's like, I thought yeah. two movies really impacted the black community. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad Tracy brought up Cobra because I didn't even think about that. I'm glad, Eddie, you brought up, there was no, nothing against Arnold Schwarzenegger Nothing. When Terminator came out, he killed the whole police department. The whole department. And nobody said a peep, at least not that I remember. Right? But I think nope. three movies, and I talked about this a while ago. New Jack City. Yes. New Jack City. Boys in the Hood. And Menace to Society. I think those three movies, Old Dog. I, literally, I, I literally, Nino Brown. <laughs> I remember when Brothers in the Hood, who were dealing drugs, started dressing like him, <laughs> started carrying like him. Some people on, they only got in the gut in the drug game because of Nino Brown. They were like, "Wait a minute, I can do this and look fine while I'm doing it. I can look clean <laughs> cut." I can have another dude who's on the business side of this who works in corporate. Like uh, I was, I, I lived in a drug house, bro. I saw how these cats started moving. I, My family, down. I saw how they started moving based off of this movie. And then I saw the shift. Boys in the men, boys in the hood came out. That's when drive-by shootings started getting more popular. Now we know black people did not invent drive-by shootings. We know the St. Ma- Valentine's Day massacre set that whole thing off. I get it. I understand it. But I'm talking about it didn't impact our community until that drive by and that, that motorcycle drive by in, in New Jack City and then Boys in the Hood when they killed Rick, the kid who was trying to make it out, the kid who had finally got into college, the kid who scored high enough on his aptitude test to get into college and get a scholarship to go play football. But it was old dog for me. Old and- dog made being a thug pretty fun. He was ignorant fun he was there's there's a scene i captured with him looking at the shotgun sitting on that couch where it was almost like he was in love it romanticized him and that shotgun it made it look so appealing and i'm not going to trip that's when i started to see a decline in community. My buddy who I was in high school with, who was a, on a honor roll from junior sophomore year all the way through senior year, one of the smartest dudes I knew, had a full ride scholarship to college and left because he had to run a Chicago street game. Wow. Family pressure. He went to run a Chicago street game. Mm. Hey, let me bring, uh, I see Eric is on here finally. He wanted to come oh, on. Eric. But I was just saying, those three movies for me, those are the ones that I felt really had a great impact in our community. You, you mentioned the the origins of the drive-by being the, the Valentine's Day mass. You know, the, the old gangsters with the Tommy guns, right? Yeah. Did you notice that, I'm sure you probably have, that there was never really a debate when they outlawed the Tommy gun? Not at all. No. There wasn't a debate because it was a public violence problem. Yep. So what has changed, right? Money. So money, the, the NRA, money, stereotypes. NRA. Sure. As the a NRA. matter of fact, Bonnie oh, and Clyde, God. when they caught Bonnie and Clyde, one of the reasons that they shot them up so badly was because they knew that Clyde had superior firepower. Yep. Mm-hmm. He had a faster car. And and also the last thing was to send a message. Send a message, right? And so, you know, people, they don't look back at that. This is why history is so important. It's so important to know these things so that you can have an idea of 
you know, what is going on? You know what, you all were talking, I thought about a, a quote from Benjamin Franklin when they were uh, sitting around trying to establish this government, Benjamin Franklin was quoted as saying that sheep will never make a revolution. Mm. And people got mad, like, well, I don't know what you're saying that. But what, he, but what he was saying is that if you're so caught up with following the trends and the ideas and the things that are going on, you don't think on your own. You can never think outside the box and you will forever find yourself following these horrible trends and thoughts. And we see that right now. Eric, you just got here. What's, what's your thoughts? Hey, <clears throat> so I just want to say, hey, everyone. Sorry for, for joining. I'm a little late. I apologize for that. Um, hey, Eric. Tracy. Hey, Tracy. I haven't talked to you in so long. Oh, my gosh. No how, doubt. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, good, good. Good to see you. Um, I So with the whole <clears throat> the gun violence thing, I, I think that because um, we say that guns are the problem um, and I don't think guns are the problem. It's it's our mentality. It's our culture. That is the real problem, because even if we take take away guns, there are still other ways to kill people. Um, you can do it through go to Walmart, your local grocery store. You can buy household goods that can the, the plant explosives and stuff like that. We had the uh, the uh, the anthrax. Remember, they were putting anthrax in envelopes, stuff like that. Do you guys remember that? And so there are other ways to kill people mass kill people and so we have the mentality in america that killing people is okay and so i i think the bigger issue is not guns particularly guns is our our convenient way to kill mass people but how do we associate that mentality how do we get away from that mentality where it's okay to kill people what is unique to americans because guns are not unique to us people say that um uh, video games Video games, again, that's not unique to Americans. We have other video games, the same video games that are in other countries. We don't see this type of violence. We only see it here in America. So what is it that's unique to our culture that prohibits this type of gun violence? What, what, what are you guys' thoughts? I'll share with you, Eric. You won't find these kind of video games in China. No, sir. So every country does not have these video games. There are countries that like ban certain foods because of chemical reasons and cancer causing reasons that we allow here. It's the same reason that the United States still does not have a, um, a general uh, data privacy protection law. So your solution is to ban video games. Is that is that what you're saying? Not to ban video games. Oh. I'm not saying that. I just want you to have an ask, a, a lens that not every country allows what we allow. I'm not okay. saying ban it. Right. I'm saying when you have money involved in all of this, money is doing the dictation, the guns, the movies, the music, all of that stuff is just a representation of people making money. It's easier to go after N.W.A. than it is to go after the owner of Sony Records or the owner. So, so, owner so, so let me let me. So you bring up China. OK, but what about Canada? So Canada has all the same type of stuff that we have. They don't have the same type of mass shootings that we do. They have the video games. They have the guns. They don't have the mass shootings. So what I think what you're saying is video games are the reason for these mass shootings. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I, no, I, I, not saying that. I would never allude to that. What I'm saying is the reason you don't hear about a lot of stuff in other countries. The thing, let's, let's just put it like this, right? Typically... And I'm, I'm pro-United States. I'm always be pro-United States. I'm a military man. I love my country. So ain't nobody going to ever move me from that. And people have tried. What I'm saying is this. The United States has always been up for sale. Let's call it what it is. And when your country is up for sale and bowing down to capitalism, you don't really care how many people are being killed. You continue to manufacture that which gets you money. There's a reason that the NRA is stiff into the Republican Party's pocket, pocket, just like there's a reason that unions are stiff into the Democratic Party's pockets. It's about a money game. It's I understand your point, but th I, I guess it sounds like you're you're blaming the NRA for the gun violence, and I disagree no, with that. I'm not, I'm not I'll, I'll, the NRA for the I'll, gun violence. I'll tell you this. I, I will say this. My, my thoughts on it is this. Um... America has is, is full of, and, and I don't want anybody to take this wrong, but America is full of victims. 
people, mm-hmm. white, black, whatever, who have been violated. Rather, you have been violated um, by um, racial issues, rather you've been violated by societal issues. People who feel, we said it earlier, who feel triggered, who feel violated, rather you women who feel that you've been marginalized. All of these different people who have been violated. And it makes me think, I remember, um, a lot of people don't remember, I'm, I'm going to pull my historian hat out, that there was a, a episode of Meet the Press. It was done in 1966 before Dr. King died. And on Meet the Press, they had all of the different people from uh, the civil rights groups. They had the they had SNCC, they had Stokely Carmichael, they had Dr. King, they had the Urban, they had all these different people. And on there also was James Meredith. Now James Meredith, well known for what he did in integrating college, all this. But James Meredith, people also forget that James Meredith tried to do a civil rights march across the country, and he was shot. He was shot, but he was not killed. And James Meredith before that was a very uh, Gandhi-ish uh, type of person. Didn't want no smoke. But on that telecast with Dr. King and everybody sitting there, they asked James Meredith how he felt about guns and people in the country having guns. And Meredith said, and I, I paraphrase, but what he said is that I believe that everybody should have guns because we, if not, who's going to protect us from the whites, the threats, the killers, and the murderers out here, right? He completely changed his philosophy. He completely changed his philosophy on who should be killed too because he himself had had become a victim. He had almost died. And I would challenge to say, that a lot of the things that happened in America, you saw that with January 6th, people who feel violated, I want my country back. Uh, Stokely Carmichael saying black power, white power. Everybody feeling like I got to grab something. And the only way for me to get this power is to make sure I got these weapons that I'm stockpiling. And if need be, I'm going to use them. Exactly. And it, Eddie, to your point, I, I think that um, because I, I hear a lot of arguments to saying get rid of guns is, is the solution to the problem. That's not a solution. That's a Band-Aid. That's putting a Band-Aid on a problem because the real problem is why do we feel as a country, because it's unique to America, why we do these mass shootings almost on a daily basis. It's not, again, there are other ways to kill people. If you take away guns, people are going to come up with Mm. radical ideas on how to mass murder people and so guns are not the issue the issue is our culture and how do we define our culture as far as why is this a problem why is this unique to america what is it that we do as in our culture that's unique and so what what are you guys' thoughts on that well i'd actually like to address that one because that that actually is right in the wheelhouse of one of my biggest issues with politics today is that our, our major political parties attack every issue as if it's some sort of binary issue. It's either this or it's that, and that's it. There are a hundred reasons. You can't just say it's our culture because culture is literally everything we do. So no, it's not video games are not the problem, and it's not that uh, mental health is a problem, and it, it, that's not causing gun violence, and it's not anxiety in youth, that's not causing problems, and it's not inner city youth that's causing the problem. It's all of those things combined that's the problem. It's, it's that we are in a country where guns and the reaction with guns is not only accepted, it's expected so that we can support a firearms industry that did not actually promote this kind of ownership of weapons until literally 50 years ago. Amen. This is a new concept, and we are forcing it upon ourselves in order to try to fit in these little binary arguments in, in uh, Congress. Because you can sit there, I mean, what is a bigger cause of a cultural problem that would make people angry enough to want to go shoot people? Like this, this thing over here in... Allen, Texas. It's not even 45 minutes away from me. My daughter's roommate was in that mall not a week ago. Um, So what makes it that common that we can just have a kid just decide one day to tell their friend on the internet 
uh, in Germany that they're going to go shoot up a school like this kid did down here in Uvalde, right? It's because there are so many problems in this country and the expected and almost it's, it's almost like it's um, I, I don't want to say it's encouraged, but the bravado that these people take into these kind of things is I can do better than that other guy that was mad. So, so I guess Tracy, what, what's the solution then? There's no one solution. That's the problem right there. The right there is the binary issue. There's not a problem and there's not a solution. Yeah, no, and I don't think to there's... say that some control of guns that might stop some violence isn't part of the solution is is naive. You don't I mean let's take speeding for instance. If everybody drives 55 miles an hour, it's a lot easier to find that guy who's doing 75, right? You if you can control as much as possible Mm. then that one outlier is easier to find. That's a good point. You, you know, I mean, but if everybody's just, okay, if these guys are going 60 and these guys are going 65 and this guy's going 63, that one guy's doing 75 can blind in a little bit, right? So it's not one problem. There's not one solution. And that is the binary argument problem that we have. And we're in a country of 330 million people. And we think we can only handle one solution at a time. That's ridiculous. You have to fix some in, you have to fix some economic imbalances absolutely so that you don't have so many people feeling they have to commit crime with weapons to survive you have to have some sort of ability to address mental health not only with people actually in crisis but before they're in crisis you have to limit weapons of some sort you have to make it easier for law enforcement to track these things down there are so many things that have to be fixed we would never be able to cover them in this little, in this one show, yeah, but yeah. you have to you have to acknowledge that it's more than just one problem and one solution, it, it, or Tracy, we're not going to get it. And Tracy, you bring up actually a great point. I I, I like what you just said there. Um, the mental health facilities that we we currently shut down a lot of mental health facilities. We put these people on the streets, and these are people that need uh, veterans like us mm -hmm. on the streets. Uh, people with mental disabilities on the streets, and so we have mental this health facilities don't make money, Eric. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> You're right; it doesn't make money. But how, how do we how do we change that mentality? As far as because I, I think what translates into the public society and versus what our uh, uh, government does are two different things. And so I want my money going to public health facilities, those mental facilities that people need, right? And I think probably you all agree with that. And so, but we don't spend our money there. We spend our money on stuff like war. And so how do we get around that? How do we kind of take back uh, those issues? In people who need to be voted in, get actively involved in teaching and learning and educating. Um, Come on. We are in a position right now and that's why i appreciate all of you all coming on where I, I i told pastor razor we are in a season of instruction because the instruction is not out here and i don't put it all on the teachers at the school we have to start and we have to start we may not save everybody but like tracy was saying right there if we can get enough people to understand because there's a lot of uh uh bamboozling going on out here you know, when Johnson wrote and signed the 1968 Gun, Gun Control Act, right? When Johnson did that, he did that right after with Dr. King being killed. Kennedy had been killed. People were getting killed. We look at how many presidents, some who have died, the Lincolns and the Kennedys, but think about how many presidents who were almost shot and killed, right? Uh, 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 FDR being one. The, the mayor of Chicago shot dead right next to him, right? So whenever that would happen, legislature, the legislators got scared. They say, hey, man, why do these people got these darn guns like this, right? And so we act like there's no precedence to enact some feasible, understandable laws that could limit the use of certain weapons and I agree with what you're saying. Mental health, all of this. Nobody's saying that none of those things go on. But what we are saying is 
Why does it come down to somebody having to kill children before you realize there is a problem and we got to stop that? Because let me tell you something. It would be easier for all of us on here right now if a guy ran in, Eric, with a gun, with a, with a knife and started to attack somebody. It'd be easier for us to jump and grab that guy than a guy that's just spraying bullets wildly hit anybody that's coming towards him. We got to be smart about what we're doing. And I saw what you said in, in, in chat, Tony. I understand that there are still violences that go on across the world. But we as Americans, when I when I'm overseas, I remember being over in Bahrain and the guy said, well, you know, y'all cowboys. Mm. Bang, 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 bang. That's how they see us. Right? Because that's what we do. Right? Bang, 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 bang. Without mm -hmm. talking. And we got to get better about that. We got to get better about that. That's why I'm such an advocate for teaching. Teaching. Mm -hmm. Early. Well, I... I Eddie, I disagree with one thing you said there. You said it takes the death of children for us to realize there's a problem. Sandy Hook was over 10 years ago. Have we really realized that there's a problem? No, we As a society, I mean? No, no. I'm, saying, I'm saying for us to even admonish the fact <laughs> that we may have a problem, right? right. I'm not saying, and I, and I agree, you know, it's so stupid that we've had to get to, I remember when, 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 when Sandy Hook happened, you know, I was like, oh man, what are we doing? You know, are we at this point right now where we, we, we're letting little innocent babies die? Right. right? Hey, who's the numbers person here? When was the last time congressional approval rating was over 30%? <laughs> right? But yet the incumbent reelection rate is over 90%? So once so, you can explain that problem, maybe we might be able to start figuring out how we're supposed to elect people into office that can help fix some problems. So, so Tracy, it, it, Tracy, you bring up a good point. I, I think that's a that, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, oh my gosh, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, but, yeah, but you can. Like, how do you fix problems with people like that who don't want to fix the problem? Mike, right. right. Yeah. you going to say something? Yeah. Right. Be Oh, go ahead. Ties into a lot of what you guys have been saying, like um, you mentioned Sandy Hook, and and I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. When Sandy Hook happened, and even you were talking about, that, does it take for children to be killed for us to do something? If you think about it, when Sandy Hook happened, what did we do? We didn't do anything. Yeah, we yeah. all cried. We right. we said thoughts and prayers. That's what we do. Yeah, and it was and it was at that point where I think I kind of realized that game. oh well, that's that's pretty much it. And then the, the shooting that just that happened in and and was it was it Texas when the young lady shot up the shot up shot up the school and I forget how many students she killed at that time. I believe it was a senator in Texas, and I forget his name, but they had interviewed him after the shooting. And he started referencing his dad. He said, you know, my dad was a World War II veteran. And he told me, he said, you know what, son? If a man truly wants to take you out, there's really nothing that you can do about it. And when he said that, in my, in my, in my heart, I was like, he just conceded to the fact that there is nothing that we can do to prevent things like this from happening. Those are the people that we have in office that's supposed to represent us. Those are the people that we have. So Eric, when you know you ask the question, how do you, how do you, how do you change, you know, like what, what can we do? You have to change the culture of an entire country. Right. You know what I mean? Because what was when you talk about America, America, we spend billions of dollars on defense and 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 wars and everything. That is the culture of this country. Right. Exactly. And I, and exactly. I'm like, I'm like Tony, and I'm and I'm sure, and I'm sure Tracy and 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 Eddie because they serve this country. You know, we love where we live, but we have to be honest with ourselves. It is exactly. And which this country has been built on, and that that we have so to change. And how do you change that? You and so, Mike, to the change to where the change happens. Yes, sir. Mike, you brought a great point. Oh my gosh, you took the words right out of my mouth. 
what is unique to our culture, American culture, that is unique to other countries. It's not guns. It's not unique to Americans. Other countries have guns. It's not um, video games. Other countries have the same video games. Those are not unique to our cultures. But what is unique to American culture is a constant state of war. Constant. And so... And so you bring you bring up a good point. Is is that the driving factor that we have so many uh, uh, violence in our country? You know, me and Eddie talked about it. We 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 there's so much propaganda. We say you know we killed so many insurgents. What what the heck is a insurgent? I don't know what insurgent. You can kill all the insurgents you want. I don't know what an insurgent is. You know what are these things? We we bring death and violence. Um, we we put terms on it that kind of uh, uh, diffuses what death is, it and so you, it. and it desensitizes. It norm- yeah, and but it's not new, guys. It's it's not it's not new. It's you know, not new. We, we, and we've become so desensitized to it to the point where, like you said, when we see stuff like this, you send up thoughts and prayers, and then we wait until the next event. Yeah, wait till next. That's it. You know, you, this has to be, if I could real quick, Eddie, it's like, what's in front of you? Like, I got a friend who's from China. She went to visit China for two weeks and she came back home and she said, Tony, can I talk to you? I'm like, yeah, you know, what's up? She said, you know, they don't have anything good about black people on the news in China. Mm. It's all negative. The only yeah. thing that's good in China with black people is basketball. <laughs> Now, this is somebody who's from China. So what happens when my cousin takes his children to Italy to go sing and they go into an Italian classroom and they look up on the wall and they've got a group of black kids painted with chains around their neck being led by somebody who's white? In Europe, this happened in 2019 when he took his kids to Europe. That's a classroom in Italy right now. Right? And so not everything that we have here is be, uh, what I'm just saying. It's not being broadcast everywhere. What's put in front of you often. When I was a kid coming up, we wanted to do more Kung Fu fighting on Sunday than anything Man. in the world. Because well, yeah, it was, it was going, going down. down. We yes. wanted to go outside and we wanted to fight. Oh, yeah, it's going down, bro. I'm going to put that snake on you. I'm going to put the train on you. Let's go. We're going to get it in. But what happened was that was live entertainment for us and it just flipped. So what you put in front of young people, the more and more and more they get indoctrinated. This is why TikTok in America is different from TikTok in China. Totally. For certain totally. Ages. Totally. So they don't have the same things that we have. I believe a lot of countries do, Eric, like you're saying, so I'm, I'm not mm. any of that stuff on, on violence. Like you're going to be violent. You're going to be violent. But what I'm saying is not every country is pushing everything. Countries have data and privacy laws. There are certain things you can't even introduce into certain countries because of their privacy laws. The United States of America does not have a standard privacy law. Europe does. The EU does. Mm. We are. The North American government, we do not have a privacy law. Those privacy laws come with certain restrictions. It's why you can have 11-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 9-year-olds on TikTok on Instagram and on Facebook, because all they got to do is lie about the year they were born, and yeah. it's done. Well, it, it you bring up a good point. That's 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 changing. <laughs> we have the restrict law that's that's being uh, uh, voted in Congress, and I vehemently disagree with that law. But I I, I want to bring up a point that um going back to the shootings, um the LGBT community. So now there was a shooting in Tennessee. That was perpetrated by a um, a woman transitioning into a man. Now it hasn't it shot up a Christian school. That's the one I was referring to. Okay, okay. so there was yeah, that wasn't in Texas. That wasn't that yeah, was it was like, Tennessee. Okay, that was, was Tennessee. Tennessee. My bad, Tracy. Yeah. I ain't trying to put y'all out there like that. Oh no, <laughs> we we got the little elementary kids in Uvalde, and we got the H E the Hispanic Walmart in El Paso. And we got the Christian Church in San Antonio, and we've got the shopping center in Arlington. We've we've got our share, but that one wasn't us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so so the reason I bring this one up in, in particular because we never we haven't really seen a woman. It, 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 you call it what it is. She's a biological woman. She was transitioning to a to a male, but we've never seen a biological woman commit these sorts of acts. 
And so this one is kind of unique and I want to talk about it because it hasn't been getting the kind of coverage that it should be. And, you know, she went and shot up a Christian school and I'm like, I'm not a Christian. I'm part of the LGBT community. But you go up and shoot up a Christian school. That's a hate crime. And so the media is not covering it in that way. And then they, they want to protect the, our community, my community. And I'm like, no, she should be treated as this should be treated as a hate crime. And why is it not covered as such? And she didn't get so, some media coverage even saying, oh, I feel sorry for her because she was going through this transition and, and she had all these bad things. Listen, look, I understand all those bad things. Great. That does not give you the green light to go up and kill people. And so no. it's not covered. What, what are you guys? Thoughts? They're not trading it like a hate crime because she was a former student there and they expect that there was some form of bullying or something in her history and that it was a targeted attack. It wasn't it wasn't targeted as a Christian attack. Yeah. But I will say this is not the first time that a woman's been involved. There was the husband and wife uh, couple in I want to say it was Santa Barbara, California, mm -hmm. several years back at the college that that went on a shooting rampage. It was a it was rare. a couple and they rare, were from the Tracy. Middle East. I mean it's, it's rare. Crazy. It's rare. But it is rare. rare. It is super rare. But let's it's... remember though that it's it's rare, but uh, and I'm about to show my age. But um I remember the Boomtown Rats. I remember Boomtown Rats, but if you don't. Uh they came out with that song I'm old back, in er back in the early eighties, <laughs> uh saying, I don't like Mondays, right? And I don't like Mondays was about uh what's her name? Uh I forget her name. But anyway, uh, a sixteen year old who went out and uh, shot up a school, right? So this was in 1979. So it's not something that is, it's, it's, we don't see it all the time. Let's put it this way. It's not report all the time, right? Um, when you see things, because mass shootings happen a lot in this country. Yes. Uh, if, if you really wanted to, to do it by the numbers of what they call a mass shooting. It's five or more, right? I think it's, it's four. Less, it's four it's more. Yeah, yeah. It's four more. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 something that is um that that is here. And it's not just that. But I, Eric, to, to 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 your question, I will say this. Um I told you before, I do believe that there are agendas out here. Absolutely. And agendas that are used to push propaganda into society, to push us a certain way. And we don't want a lot of people fighting against certain things. Let's let's understand something cuz after everything you all were saying, um let's remember something here. America has always had guns. Always. You know, Ida B Wells advocated for blacks to have guns, right? After all of the lynching that was going on. W. B. Du Bois was was an advocate for guns. Different civil rights folks, even Dr. King, at the beginning of the civil rights if, of in, in the Montgomery Civil Rights Movement, they had guns. The bishops, for, the, 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 the bishops for defense, they had guns. It's not an issue of people having the guns. I do agree with you wholeheartedly on that, Eric. But what I also think is that it does go, and I, me, I'm going to always lean on the education, the lack of morality that we're teaching, and also hurt, hurt people, hurt people. The, the, the uh, philosopher, civil rights uh, activist or whatever, uh, T. Thomas Fortune said, in the absence of law, we maintain that every individual has every right to protect himself, right? That was the belief. And so if I feel like I'm hurt, I've been betrayed by society, whether it's real or not, I'm going to react and I'm going to go out and hurt others who I feel are hurting me, right? And so it's, it's, it's a really a big issue for me because I feel we have to have these discussions and we got to educate, right? We're not doing that. We brought up certain subjects tonight that people, I'm guarantee you, those who are watching, you don't know these things because we're not putting them in the mainstream. We're teaching you how to uh, run, hide, and fight. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what we're not teaching you is what, how do we get to this point? How do we get to the point where people are just randomly pulling out guns with our legislation, with our morality, lying to each other about what's really going on? Those things have to be addressed. And Eddie, I would even go as far as saying if, if we if we want to add to the list of reasons, um, let's not let's not overlook parenting. 
Yeah. Parenting is completely different now than it was when I was coming up. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was coming up, there was a such thing as a village. Like your your block, that it was like a three block radius. That was your village, and everybody played a part in your upbringing. There was it was to the point where as if your neighbor, if they saw you doing something, what would they say? Hey, you better not do that, otherwise I'm gonna tell your mama. Now. It was an off chance that they actually knew your mom. So what did you do? You was like, well, you know what? Let me pull Just back. In case they know my mom, let me not do that. But, but Mike, you bring yeah. up a good point because that sounds like a cultural problem. And, and I so was, I was just about to say that was the culture that we had back then uh, that a village helped raise the children somewhere along the lines we stopped leaning on the village and it got to the point where we was like, no, you can't tell me how to raise my child. I'm going to raise him or her the way I want to. You can't do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. Teachers have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. And teachers, exactly. Teachers, teachers right now that that's one of the biggest problems is, is that we went away from the collaborative effort of the community to teach and to raise and to upbring to no, I don't even know. I don't even know the person living next door to me. And, and so, so, so Mike, so mm-hmm. Mike, I, I agree with everything you just said, but the, the, I guess the question is, how did we drift away from that cultural problem? Where, what was the cause that we drifted away from that? Is it technology? Is it what, what, what do you think is the There's cause? There's so many things in history. Right. That I, I tell my we... students to follow the money. Yes. Look at our economic changes today. Yeah. Every single thing you've talked about, you can trace back to economy. We don't have enough money for a parent to stay home. It's multiple jobs, multiple parents working, kids on their own a lot. We don't have enough money to put kids or take people to a therapist when they need one or see a counselor when they need one because they can't even afford that kind of insurance. If you can get people economically stable first, a lot of these issues we could actually work on with a little more diligence. Unfortunately, now, right now, we're playing whack-a-mole. Yeah. There is one problem. We'll fix that for this kid and this one over here for this kid, and that's the best we got. Yeah, he's absolutely right, man. That that money money plays a big part. It plays a big part in it. We talked about money, Eric. This is from gunviolence.org. This is this year alone, mass shootings in the United States, 210. Yeah. 826 victims injured, 283 killed, 10 suspects injured, 13 suspects killed, 131 suspects arrested. And it's See, just, and I, and I it, really find myself, I, I lean, I lean nibble on a lot of things, but there are some things that I still, I, I actually probably still lean a little medieval. I'll be honest with you. Some of these people, if we catch them alive, and give them to the mob and let them handle it. <laughs> we might actually have a deterrent. Well, well, but that's that's just me. That may sound, I know nobody's gonna like that. That may sound crazy, Tracy, but <laughs> I want to just I don't want to I'm gonna use the example so y'all give Bring me some the grace. Hard feathers. That's all I'm saying. I'm gonna use the example of the cartel who killed those two Americans and kidnapped the other ones because mm-hmm. they operated outside of the guidelines of the cartel, what did cartel leadership do? They turned them in. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so t- Tony, Tracy, I, I have to push back on, on, on uh, I'll push back a little bit on those comments because I, I, I think we do need to bring these people in that commit these atrocities and see what was the motivating factor. Because I think if we get down to the motivating factor, we can come to a solution on how to prevent these things from occurring. But there are multiple yeah, the thing is, most of these people have left some sort of manifesto or evidence of what we do know most of their motivating factors. I mean, right. who do we not know? I mean, out of all of them that you have, that you have seen, who do we not know? There was the dude the, the LGBT, in Las, we still, Las Vegas. We're still waiting for that, Tracy. <laughs> Which we haven't received that manifesto for, the, for, the, for that woman that shot up the Tennessee Christian school. We're still she's, waiting for that. She's one of the few. And the oh. one in Las Vegas, the one who shot up the whole a uh, country um mu- yeah the, the the festival right mm. but this guy over in allen he had nazi crap all over his chest 
there's you don't have to take a step farther than that to really understand where his motivation was. Most of them you do know. Yeah. But either way, I'll take a deterrent over motivating factor any day. Yeah. And some people, at- Eric, unfortunately, just want to see the world burn. That's yep. what that's what that's what uh that's I saw my son stuff. there, bro. I, I <laughs> saw my son <laughs> put that and I want to shoot the whole day down. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that but that's, that's I mean, but uh, realistically speaking, there are some people that don't have a motivating <laughs> so factor. There are some people man, look, he is the concept of organized crime. Organized crime moved in a certain way. You mm-hmm. look at the Chicago street gangs, all the old leadership, once they got locked up, they started leading themselves. You cut I, the head off of the snake because you thought that would kill the gang. And so, it, so, it just so, created a bunch of little heads that now, you look at the case of Yummy Sander for Tupac talked about this young young man a lot. I can't, I don't know if, he, I can't remember if Yummy was 12 or 10, 10 11 mm-hmm. or 10 when they killed him. Right, he got assassinated. I remember. I remember, yeah. He got assassinated because he went on a killing spree at 12 years old. 12 years old. And so, the, his gang shut him down. What I'm saying is when you have these young people now who don't have no leadership, everybody is against themselves. Even within the gang, there's no stru- they're against themselves. So when you have this type of mentality where you don't have a senior leader who could come in, this is how we operate. We only operate in these parameters. I mean, it's it's illegal crime. We got that, but this is why it's called org. It was called organized. You bowed to leadership. If you did something out of line, you got dealt with by leadership. I witnessed this as a kid myself, and I've lived in three drug houses, so I've seen how this game goes. Right? So I talks about that. Yeah. I, I, so I I think I think my problem is with, with the um. Because even if there's not a motivating factor, I, I think you guys were saying some some of you, but I, what is what drives this type of behavior? It's it seems like it's unique to American culture, and so what is driving this behavior? Even if it's um, we can take guns, we can take the video games, all this type of violent stuff, but all that stuff is not unique to American culture. So what is it about our culture that drives this behavior? And I don't think we've really answered well, that right well, now. Well, Eric, culture deals with it. We're not Saudi Arabia putting hits on journalists and getting these cats <laughs> chopped up, bent up, broke off, and you can't find the body scraps of this person. Like, you know, everybody, every country, you know, and, and, and I look at this from a worldview, every country has its amount of dissidents who do crazy stuff. It's mm, just true. not advertised because it's it's propaganda for America. It's not propaganda for other countries to 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 announce everything that's going on in their country. We don't know how many people died from COVID in China. We don't know how many people are getting COVID a day. We don't even know how many people are dying per day in China from COVID this day. All we know is that the supply chain is impacted, right? The supply chain is impacted because factories are sometimes being shut down. But we don't know because the information is not coming out. America, trace the money trail. Is up for sale. Our news headlines make money, make money. all over the you, world. You know, I will tell you the one thing, and, and you guys, my military friends have seen this. We've gone to other countries and seen this. One thing that is unique between the United States and other countries that is falls outside of most of these is the United States carries a bravado about itself I'm yeah. say that, that yes. no other country does. Yeah, so this do. bravado of freedom here. I can do what I want, and it doesn't really matter how it affects you. Uh-huh. Right. Is a big part of it. Exactly. But again, it's only one part of it. That's what it's only one part of it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, Tracy. I, I. So you bring up a really good point, and I. So I want to take it back I to the answer. Good points, Eric. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you. You all make good points. I want to bring it back to the answer with Tracy and and Eddie. Um. So you remember that time that we sailed through the um, the uh, uh the Persian Gulf. The straits, right Sweet. between Iran and all those, and and our captain put up the American flag. Now he got in trouble for. It. I don't know if you guys remember this. He got in trouble for it, and you know he was out. Ah, America, 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 and we were yeah, you know, kind of cheering it on. I don't know if you guys remember. We we're cheering it on. It's just like you know, I, I look back at those instances, and I'm like, hey, that was kind of. We should have <laughs> done that. that. That's 
Well, that was there kind are of like sometimes bullying. when political motivation Polit- factors out. Like the like last week with the United States, right in front of one Chinese destroyer, surfaced three submarines simultaneously. Simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. there there sometimes you just need to show. Listen, if you get out of line, this is what can happen to you. Right. But you know, you you talk about the times on the Anzio. Eddie and I talked about this extensively on some mid watches here yeah. when we went into Iraq the second time. Right. Uh, you were talking because uh, uh, Tony was talking about having some control and he, you know, with the fathers and the families and stuff, there is an analogy to be made from Iraq. Iraq did not have a crime problem. It had an authoritarian problem, mm-hmm. right? So people were scared to commit crimes. When we went in and we liberated them and Saddam Hussein was taken out of power, we did not restructure things. We disbanded their military, which kept the order. Yeah. What happened after that? How many people were getting murdered because they were not Shia anymore in control? How many people were getting murdered there because there was no control? There was oh, nobody was over, That's right. you know, keeping oversight, keeping everybody in line. Because I, I'll tell you this, back in September, I had two of my former students that were shot in a drug deal. One of them was killed and one was um, in the hospital for a long time. And those two students, I remember when they were in school, their parents never made them come to school. They never made them do their homework. They never really were involved. Now, I don't know the details of their home life, but I know they did not have that. And that is part of the problem. Uh, And and like Tony said, if you don't have some sort of structure, you don't have some daddy telling you, putting his finger in your chest saying, that's not how a man acts. Or a grandma taking that switch off the tree out the back on, and reminding you what you weren't supposed to do. Oh, you, if you don't have these deterrents and these structures. Then yeah. where where does our culture end up? You know. Oh. You know, I'm gonna tell you guys. I've had uh, in my life. I know people look at me as they don't see that, but in my life, I've had guns pulled on me four times. Right. Uh, I've had a gun pulled on me from a guy who was supposedly a friend and aimed it at me and my other friend and threatened to blow both of us away. I've had a gun sit right on my forehead uh, in the dark and the guy saying uh, someone walked off to the side who I think is an angel and said, he's not the guy you're looking for. Um, I've had lived through drive-bys. I've seen so much violence in my, before I ever went in the Navy. And so one of the things that violence does is it kind of desensitizes you to violence. It's Mm -hmm. it's not that you don't care about it. You feel I can adapt to it, Mm. right? And once I adapt to it, it becomes a little less of a threat to me, right? Um, I used to tell my sons all the time, there's, if there's anything that will set me off, it's if you do something to my wife and my kids, right? And my, I would tell my sons this all the time. And they always say, oh, dad, whatever, you know. And then we had a situation where somebody tried to run down my wife and my son, right, in a Sam's Club parking lot. And my sons saw a flip, a switch go off, right? And they were like, they didn't know how to respond to that. We all have a switch, right? Something we care about, something that will switch us off. And if we don't really understand that about Americans, because we have these freedoms, when that switch goes off for some people, they don't feel they got any restrictions. They're going to do whatever they want to do to whoever they want to do it to. Self-preservation. And you keep in, and Eric, you're, you, you keep asking the question of what is the problem? Well, there's many problems, right? There are many different issues. It's not just a one button situation. Tony said earlier in the, um, in the, in the broadcast that, you know, when you go in, it, there's, there's issues with color, right? We had a situation in November, 2018, right? Where somebody decided to start sh- uh, shooting, right? And a guy came out and said he was going to be, try to stop it. And the cop showed up. He was the, the good guy with the gun. Yep. And they shot him. That was a veteran in a mall. Veteran in, a mall. Veteran in Georgia. Yep. And, and, and you bring up a good point I, I want to mention because we, we 
the 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 usual profile fits the O with some white, you know, person, and and it's, it's, that's not actually the case. We did have African Americans doing this perpetrating as well. If you guys remember the DC sniper, that was an African American and a kid, yeah. and mm -hmm. so it's not unique to white people, is what we like to kind of put this in a box in it no that's not the problem it's 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 our cultural problem and so um you know because i experienced a dc sniper where i was like oh my gosh if i pump gas i may get shot mm -hmm. you know so it, it's a scary thing and and the profile that was fit oh he's he's a, a white guy in a white van that that's a, it, which was not the case yeah. at all Yep. And so, you know, we need be, we need to be cognizant to to these profiles and 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 see that you know it's not unique to a, a certain identity. It, it's unique to just American culture in general. I mean, hey, do you do y'all listen? That that's that's a good point. That's an outstanding point, uh, uh, Eric. Uh, people don't remember the uh, Revolutionary uh, Action Movement, right? Do y'all? Does anybody remember that in history? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Which one? The Revolutionary uh, Action uh, Movement, right? You remember when they had there was a plot to kidnap the head of the NAACP, Roy Wilkins, and they planned to kidnap him and kill him. And they and the whole purpose of it was we're going to kill the head of the NAACP, and then we're going to blame it on white people. Oh wow, I didn't know that. So That's it's all. not it's not, but again, I don't remember that movie. I, the, for a second, I thought you were talking about what was his name? No, Smolder, no, the actor no, no, who got it's beat not up. A movie. It quite literally happened, but because we oh. don't teach history, because I don't we're remember telling that one. ourselves that we and why did they want to do that against uh, Roy Wilkins? Because they felt that Roy Wilkins was expendable because he was a he was for limiting the ability for people to have guns, and so they were like, "Oh no, we needed to protect ourselves against the racist." So let's kill him, right? It's crazy. So it's not necessarily, like, you make a good point, Eric. It's not just the fact that it is a, just one splinter, right? You got young black men out here killing each other in the street, shooting people, carjacking and all this other stuff, right? But the, it, the, the emphasis has got to be on the fact that we are failing. We are failing to meet all, so many of these criteria that you guys were talking about. But I, for me, on my side, we don't teach history. We don't. We don't teach it in its purity and its, its, its fact, right? Regardless of if I'm hurting your feelings, regardless if you agree with me, I want you to notice. Dr. King said I would never stop a Klansman from saying what he has to say because that's his American right to say it. Exactly. Just exactly. I, 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 can't, right, I can't harp on that point enough. I have the right to go and challenge him. And here's the thing, we have seen that when Klan members, when uh, skinheads are exposed to different cultures and different people, there is, not in all of them, but there is change in some people because they just didn't know. Even in blacks, I don't ever wanna deal with this, these white people. And then they realize, man, I believed a whole bunch of bull that wasn't even real, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, wow, Eddie, you, you said a powerful statement. So one of the things that I, I always say is, is that um, we have freedom of speech in this country, but, but the, the thing is, is that uh, we have freedom of speech, but when we, when people say such stuff that we don't agree with, we want to censor them or we want to cut them off. And I'm like, well, no, the freedom of speech is, Letting someone say, even if you have a different opinion, letting someone to say what they have to say, despite your disagreement with them, that is the freedom of free of speech, and that that's kind of the thing that we want to get back to. Oh, Tracy, you just rejoined us. Well, I, I got to jump, but I want to say this. Um, I appreciate you. Eric was great about bringing up, you know, beyond the color barrier, right? But I also want to note that. I think it was John Malvo was his name. Was that the DC sniper? Yeah, it was one of them. That's a good mm. boy. Like that. And then you have, so there were two cases to me in American history. See, when you go to give someone the death penalty and then you kill them very quickly, it's always concerning for me. 
And what's concerning about that is you take Timothy McVeigh and you take the DC sniper, both military veterans, both taken out very quickly. And we got people who've been on death row 20, 30 years. These two guys were executed very fast. And there are reasons for that. I don't want to get into the conspiracy theory side of this thing. But well, I, I think so. So the, the adult, because the, the, there were two of them and, and the kid, it was like 17 years old. I don't think he was executed. I think he's still in, 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 in prison. Yeah, he, I don't think he's. Yeah, he won't see the light of day as far as. Right. I'm, oh, he'll right. be locked up for the rest of his life. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. No, you guys were talking about uh, John, John Allen Muhammad and uh, the young kid was the Malvo kid. But okay. yeah, um, but see, here's the thing with that. You know, it comes down to what they were taught, right? Um, Muhammad was radicalized. Uh, he radicalized uh, Malvo. Well, he, he wanted was... to kill white people. He actually yeah. wanted to kill. So his plan was to kill white people. And then he wanted to actually kill pregnant white women. Yeah. So. But it's still, it's radicalization. <laughs> the same thing with McVeigh. Mm -hmm. when, 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 mental health. When McVeigh blew mm. up uh, the o Oklahoma City bombing, right, and one of the things that he was he was quoted as saying was, "Well, they had an uh, uh, interracial uh, daycare in that building, right?" Um, again, we can say mental health is a part. I, I gotta believe that it has to be some part, but it's also how we condition and train people. Yes, sir. If mm. we condition and train people and we radicalize them. Um, to have these these views, right? It's just when I was t just talking about, you know, Ram, right? When they wanted to kill Roy Wilkins, they were radicalized to think that it didn't matter if they killed a black man to, to achieve their goals, right? Mm -hmm. We we are in a country where people are doing this every day, even in minor ways. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I, I They're telling me I got these guns in my house and I'm going to be heard. I'm going to be heard. As Tracy said, I'm going to write my manifesto out. And tell you all why I killed you, right? Because even if I'm going to die, I'm ready to die. We're coming up to the anniversary of the top shooting, the top grocery store shooting, mm. right? This, this, these people go in here with the idea that they're going to make a statement based on whatever they were radicalized in doing. The man that shot up the movie theater here in, in uh, Denver, right? Aurora. He went to that movie theater, Eric, because he knew minorities and military folks went to that movie theater mm -hmm. he also had done study on murder he wanted me and my son talked about it. he wanted to test a theory out yep mm -hmm. so yeah how to get away from it. and how to and how to blame mental health to, exactly <laughs> so these things they don't happen in the vacuum so i i did want before you have to i know you have to go tony um, I did want to say I do listen to your show, so I'll, I'll, I'll stay tuned. <laughs> I appreciate uh, what you put out, so I'll, I'll definitely stay tuned to that. I think we lost Tracy, though. Yeah, he, he dropped in and out, but, you know, I appreciate Mike and I appreciate Tony. I appreciate all y'all for coming on. I know two hours is a long time, man, but I really, really appreciate you, brothers, man. <laughs> right? Because um, I, I am, I am just... I am committed, right, to to mentoring and growing young people. Um, and I know you guys are too. I see your shows and what we're trying to do in all different types of ways. And man, that has to be appreciated because we need that right here. Um, I think Tracy's trying to come back. But, you know, even as, as Tracy, with, as a teacher, uh, Eric, you know, I remember when Eric first walked on the ship and I wanted to punch him in the face, yeah. right? But the reality of it is um, we, we want to instruct and, and, and get people to understand, man. What, understand. what, I, what I will say, Tracy did get us through Lofton. He did. <laughs> he did get us through that. <laughs> that was a difficult time. And I, I thank you, Tracy, for getting us through that. But... <laughs> Gentlemen, I got to bounce. I got to get out of here. Thank you, Tony. Uh, but hey, man, Greg, Eddie, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Eric, appreciate nice you, brother. You. Mike, we got to get up because we still got to talk about that age thing, bro. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Talk about that, man. So either you come on my show, I come on your show, or we just create a show and just talk about it. But we, we'll get we'll, we'll yeah. Get yeah, man. Absolutely. You got it. Uh, Tracy, I don't know if it is in Dallas, but it's in here. It's uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, man. So Thank you for all you do, brother. Appreciate you. Yes, yes, yes.
I don't know if he can hear y'all, but yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony, man. I know you got a roll. <laughs> no, brothers, man. Um, it's been two hours. It didn't even seem like it's been two hours. No, nah, you know, you have a good conversation, man. It flies by. But um, well, I want initially I had I asked Pastor Razor to come on, but I, I didn't think I thought about it this morning. I was like, does he realize it's his birthday? Oh uh, so, <laughs> so he messaged me. Um his new book is out. I'm gonna try to put that uh, uh, advertisement on that on the uh, on the network. But um, yeah, I I appreciate y'all, man. I, this is a heavy thing to unpack. That's why I gave it two hours, um, and I wanted differing views, right? Differing views, because it's easy. Look, people better understand something. I Eric never believes this. I'm an introvert, right? I don't like to be around people. But I do what I do because I had to realize that it's not about my personal feelings, right? Mm. I'm a very quiet self to myself person, but we got to get out here, you know, and we got to start talking about these hard subjects. No, um, you are, Eddie. And it's, <laughs> it's surprising that you, you made this network. I'm like, Eddie doesn't like talking to people. Like, Eddie won't even look you in the eye. If he doesn't, if Eddie does not know you, he will not look you in the eye. And so <laughs> yeah, I, I was not. like, Eddie is very introverted. So I'm surprised I you created this network. That because, man, I've had him on my show numerous times. And there are times when we just let him talk. I'm like, no, nah, man, you're good. Go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> Eric, I would have, you know, when I we were on the ship, uh, Eric was one of the people that came to me and was like, look, man, you OK? Because I would come to work. And I'd have this. I didn't realize it, this look on my face. Right. So the guy started coming up saying, man, you know, I want to talk to you, man. You like you wanted to put somebody in the face, man. You all, you all right. But it's because I'm trying to get my myself ready to deal with the day and everybody and then i had to make myself start to and i appreciate eric for this because they made me have to go and, and talk to people yeah um, and that's when when you first when i first came on the only people you would talk to you would talk to me and you would talk to tyson that's it yeah i wouldn't talk to everybody and I, that, you didn't talk to anybody else <laughs> my, my sons are a little bit like that you know they're very you know but you know you got to get to a point you know, and I, that's why I appreciate this conversation uh, where we do talk. You know, I read a lot. I read too much. Sometimes I'm thinking I need to stop reading because um, it messes with my eyes. But I am constantly reading and learning and trying to grow so that I can help others. Right. Yeah. Um, this whole gun debate to me is really just another part of a greater illness that we have in this country. Yeah. We are failing. And. We have failed for two generations, in my opinion. We have failed. Not all of us. Some of us see it, and we're trying to rem you know remedy it. But we are failing. That's why Tina is on her show. That's why I asked the boys to do their show. Um, that's why I, I promote anybody that's positive out here trying to educate, right? Trying to give an opinion, trying to opine, because it is so important for us to, you don't know who you might reach. Right. Who's on the edge when I was in Bahrain and I had about six people that I had to sit with who wanted to kill themselves. Right. And I would ask each one of them, man, you know, you OK. And it was little things that led to bigger things. Right. And, and some people want to kill themselves and they want to just do themselves. Then there are some like I want I want people to remember me. Right. I want everybody to remember who I was. And if the only way for them to remember is I'm going to take out five, 10 other people, at least they'll know my name. And that's crazy as we look at it, but it's the reality of what we're dealing with. So it is a sickness. Yeah. Y'all got any closing things you want to say, man? Well, I just thought, you know, just thinking about, you know, Eric, Eric had asked, you know, like what's, what's the solution, you know, and although we know that there is no one, easy button solution i think there's a couple of things we can do number one like in and like on my show we we consider ourselves to be purveyors of common sense and the reason why i say that is is because when you look at when you look at the state of society now especially with social media everybody has a mic everybody has a camera 
and everybody has an opinion about everything. And oftentimes everybody's opinion is not, you know, you, you can be, you can have a wrong opinion, but you can't have the wrong facts. Right. But everybody has, you know, and it's so much misinformation out there and we try to sift through some of it and just try to bring light to the craziness that's out there. Also, Mm -hmm. I think what we have to do as, as a people is try to, is, tr- is try to capitalize on teachable moments, right? There was an instance, I'm, I'm going to say this real brief. There was, like when I was, you know, I was coming up, we was talking about video games earlier. Um, there was a game um, on, uh, that was out some years ago called Fable. And mm-hmm. one of the things about Fable is, is that with Fable, you, it was free reign and you can make decisions and do different things. And your character was affected by the decisions that you made, Right. So if you did good things and treated the people, the villagers well, like your guy was really bright and he had, you know, like a halo and all these things. But if he did evil or like if you stole and killed things, he was really dark or he was grayed Mm -hmm. out. He had muted colors. So my son, who was younger at the time, you know, I allowed him to play the game because I try to also talk to them about the stuff that they're playing. Mm -hmm he would always attack the villagers and he would still go break in the houses and do all that stuff. And his character was really gray and dark looking. And then he saw my character and then he noticed how the people was running from him and everything. And he was like, dad, he was like, why don't, why don't they like me? And I had to literally tell him like, dude, you, you killing, they, you killing folks. You have to understand that <laughs> your, your actions, your actions, have you know, consequences. They, they have consequences. And I think where we are in society is that a lot of people, a lot of people are living where they believe that there are no consequences and repercussions for the things that they do. Oh, it's very nihilistic out here. You know, nihilism is a huge thing. It's, it's, it, a, it's a big thing. It's a big thing out here. People don't have no hope. I, I, I tell my sons, if you don't have hope, then you don't have love. You don't got joy because you're not looking forward to anything. Right. right? Absolutely. And, and you are so right, Mike. Um, it's so much of that. And, and, and that, that nihilism part is another part of the whole issue, right? Part of the issue, you know? And we got to teach people again. It's so, it's so important to have the discussion. I, I tell, look, I have a discussion with my sons. I, we talk, me and my wife, we, 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 we meet them at their level of understanding. Yes, sir. But at the same time, right? I realized something when I didn't want to do because I didn't want to do erudition. I've told people this many times. I did not want to do it. And I got it, gave it to me. I said, you need to do this. And I said, oh, but I started to realize, you know, I'd mentored so many people for so many years. I'd grown so many different young people. And I realized that they were doing well. Right. They were doing well. And people would come back to me and say, man, had I not talked to you on this watch or we were here and you talked to me, I don't know where I would be. And then I said, you know what? It's because somebody took the time to talk to me. They took that time. So I, I do this show and, and I encourage folks to do what they're doing because you never go. And we're some reason we freaked out there for a minute, but I ran around with people who, who weren't really cool, right? Who did some unspeakable things. I didn't, but I was around them, and it made me understand never to show weakness to those folks, right? And so I learned very early, you know, that it's important to have positive people around you, absolutely, to grow you and to help you. So, Eddie, uh-uh, my closing statements, I, I did want to, real quick, I did want to give a shout out to uh, Shamima. She 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 apparently asked me a question I didn't answer, so I, I apologize to that. But I, I do want to tell you, Shamima, if you, you have questions, um, please hit me up. Uh, uh, send me a request on Facebook. I'll definitely answer it. Um, I know my views are dissenting from yeah. the nationalistic views or the corporate news video uh the uh, uh, media and so i you know I, my, my biggest thing is i, I want to distinguish between what's propaganda and and, and what's not uh, a lot of stuff you see on cnn msnbc or even fox is propaganda 
And so I want to distinguish between those things and tell you what the truth is. And I, I tune into your station, you, uh, Eddie, uh, Tina, and then the boys, because you guys tell the truth. And I tune into these channels because I want to hear the truth. And then and it's, it's unfortunate because the truth wants to be censored. And so these channels try to censor you for telling the truth. And, and you oh, know, we know. Mike, Mike, them do that man, a real talk show. We know that you can be put into these jails. Just man. because you say I, so. I, I served a couple of sentences, man. <laughs> <laughs> like you got censored too? <laughs> yeah, they man, were. I, I was there for about a whole month. I was like, come on, they good. <laughs> what did you say? They got you censored. <laughs> I don't remember. It was something about Trump and um and then really I was just responding to something that somebody mm -hmm. had said to me. So it wasn't even like what I said was wrong. <laughs> it was in response to what the guy said. The next thing I know, Facebook was like, 30 days, no lie. But you know I'm what, like, Mike? So, so you know what? So I, I'm not a Trump fan at all. But what Trump does sometimes, he mess up and tells the truth. And that's what they don't like about Trump. It's not that he's anti-establishment. He tells the truth sometimes, and they don't like that. So did Mussolini and so did Hitler. But you know the reality of it is, um, they tell those truths to get you to trust them. That's really what that is. Let me give you a little bit of something, and then I'll get you to trust. So, you know, it's, it's what it is. Um, but no, brothers, it's been two hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't want to keep you guys all night, but I, I will say this. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, for supporting the network like you all do. I really, really appreciate it, um, especially as I try to do other things, as my health is, is, is starting to be better. So um, I'm very um, happy that, you know, Mike, man, I, 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 I pinged you at the last minute, man. I really, really, really greatly appreciate it oh, man, uh, thing. coming on and, and uh, spending time with us tonight. You all are uh, really good uh, influences for my sons. They watch uh, shows, you, Tony, and all, and they watch those shows. Um, and I just really, really, really appreciate y'all because they need to hear those other, you know, sometimes it's just like, dang, dad, this sound like something that we talked about. Yeah, because it's real. That's what we it's dealing real. with, right? It's what we dealing with. So um, I just want to say thank you all, man. Tina, too. Uh, Y'all are people so so gracious with my wife getting on talking about mental health because I know for a fact I get on talk about history. She gets on talks about mental health. I know there are many people going, oh my God, please. <laughs> no, man, it's important. But it's I, important. I, I, I told her I was I'm, I got to have her on because that's something that that was one of the that was one of the things that we wanted to kind of build. That was one of the blocks that we wanted to build a show on. You know, along with talking about you know general conversation we also want to make sure that we that we encourage men especially yeah you know listen dude your mental health is important mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like because for years we were, we were told shake it off rub some dirt on it you know man up you'll be all right right that yeah. was a, that was the thing but you know in actuality there are times look you need to talk about some things you need yeah. to face some things you need to be able to express things and your mental health is important and it's not as taboo as it used to be back in the day, which is excellent, mm -hmm. but it still has some ways to go. Yeah. All right, brothers. Um, thank you. I'm gonna try to go eat something because I ain't eat nothing today. But I do this. I do this intermittent fasting, man. And uh, oh, I I did want to ask Mike. Did you did you have your own podcast or show? Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, actually, we we do. Um, we I used to do audio, but I haven't. Now I'm just uploading the audio from our live shows, but we go, we, we are live every Friday at seven o'clock. Um, you can uh, either go to my Facebook page. I, I'm going to drop the link. I dropped the link. Yeah, in drop, here. Drop the link. Yeah. I, yeah. Drop the link. I'll, I'll definitely follow you, Mike. Yeah. Check us out, man. You know, we're not as, you know, we're, we're, our show is different. We're a little off kilter sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever have me as a guest, I'll I'll definitely participate. So <laughs> no problem. But we, I think we, you've seen my views. So <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the one thing that I that I pride myself on is that um, one of the I always wanted to make sure that you got just different points of views. Like I, mm. because I know that I can have tunnel vision about some things, but yeah. I also try to be objective and say, hey, you know, even if I don't agree with you. I at least want to try to see it from your point of view. Right, exactly. 
Which may give right. me from perspective. So, you know, but yeah, man, I'll, I'll, man, I'll love to have you on. I dropped it in the chat for y'all. So, you, so yeah, please support my brother that we're on here, man. Go on to YouTube, subscribe, 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 subscribe. I don't know if I can say that enough. Uh, but yeah, get on there and do that. Um, believe me, we understand because the more we we grow, right, um, the, the more we reach. I just told Pastor Razor earlier, I messaged him, I said, you know, I really want us to all grow because see these networks that we create, these connections yeah. that we create, we're helping a lot of more people than we know. Yes, and sir. It, it, it's reaching a lot more people. And there's so much misinformation out here. Me and Mike talk all, we really, what we really need to do, Tony was talking about, the, he said, we really need to do a show well, we do nothing but talk about the misinformation that we could just, just see. Oh, bunk and stuff. We should just get our own myth bus. Because <laughs> it's so much stuff on like TikTok, Facebook. You'd be like, whoa, Ooh. what is this, man? I'm still well, and, 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 and they want to ban TikTok. So our government's putting legislation yeah. in the Retrict Act to ban those type of uh, media because they think that uh, uh, young Americans are going to be dancing into socialism. But well, you know what? It's what I, it is, that, man. That's a great topic, Mike. If you haven't talked about it, I love to be on our show. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's out here. But I don't keep y'all. My wife tells me sometimes, you know, I'm introverted, but then I, I'm, I'm long-winded. So I will tell you all. Uh, and somebody's calling me right now. Probably tell me to get off here. But hey, man, thank you all. Thank you all, man, for coming on. Uh, I, I really, really do appreciate it. I can't say that enough. And uh until until uh i guess oh, well i do a wrap on sat up, up on saturday i gotta say that saturday i do a wrap up i try to do that wrap up every saturday evening i may not be on that long but it's just my way of getting on to try to reach the folks who can't join us live and who may have questions because i started getting messages in from people around the world saying hey man i would say something to you but you ain't on so whatever but you can always send me a message or whatever uh, even though we're not on, do it, hit us on our YouTube or Facebook or whatever, right? And please, please support my brother here, the Man Up Real Talk Show. Uh, and I put that link in there. Y'all click that. Y'all uh, go subscribe, help them out uh, as we grow these networks and get better. All right. All right, man. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Thank yes, you sir. all, man. Have a good rest of the evening. Thank yeah, you all. Thank you, brothers. We'll talk soon. Later.